Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Monday Night Mythbusters. I'm Dr. Carolyn George from Vita Integrative Medicine and Leslie Harrington, Transformational Coach. Hello, guys. And we're so pleased to have you guys join us again tonight. Tonight, we are going to be speaking about adrenal fatigue or hypercortisolism, if you want to have a more technical term. So uh, what I'd like to do is just have anybody that's watching kind of give me a thumbs up if you've heard of this or if you think that you have it uh, so that we can kind of see just how common um, it might be uh, and if anybody's uh, heard of it. And then I'm going to go in and kind of describe a little bit and then you can tell me if that sounds like something that fits you. Hey there, Anne. Hi, Anne. Thanks for joining. Oh, yeah. She knows this this word. <laughs> yes. Well, it's funny. A lot of people know the word. They don't know um, the meaning behind it. They don't mm -hmm. really know what it means sure. to them. Right. And then they hear the controversy around, oh, it's not real. You know, all that. That's the pe people I'll talk to. Right. Or that, you know, like if somebody's saying, oh, my adrenals. I'm like, do you know what you're talking about? Right. You know, like right. sometimes it's interesting. So hopefully we'll clarify some of that tonight. Yes, exactly. So uh, we've got a few thumbs up there for people that have uh, know that they have it or think that they have it and uh, so if you guys if you have any questions about this we're going to talk primarily tonight on preventing it but we would we'll also touch on some of the treatment for it because some of the treatment for it is actually also some of the prevention for it so hey there Marianne hi Marianne so uh, with that I'm going to dive in and just kind of explain a little bit about what the adrenals are and what they do and a little bit about the controversy and then we'll talk about ways to um, think if you might be heading towards this or if you might already have it. So adrenals, the adrenals are two little glands. They're like uh, very small, walnut shaped and they sit on top of your kidneys on both sides. So they kind of sit in the back area <clears throat> just on top of your kidneys. So you have two of them. Their main job is to make adrenaline and cortisol so that you can respond to stress because we have stress we had stress as cave people right when we were evolving and so you needed to have a way to kind of mount everything together that you need so if a lion is or a tiger is chasing you you need to be able to mobilize you need to be able to get the blood to your muscles you need the blood to have a lot of sugar in it so that the uh, muscles can have some energy to burn so they can run or they can fight you need to dilate your pupils you need to make your hearing more sensitive. You need to um, get the heart going and kind of focus the brain on whatever the danger is. Yeah, and you, your body at that point is like not interested in reproducing. So mm -hmm. it's gonna shut down your sex hormones. It's gonna shut down your digestive process because no need to be processing food. I gotta go, right? <laughs> right, right. So those are two critical aspects because down the road you'll understand why mm -hmm. it's so affecting of your hormones. Right, yeah, it makes it very big uh, effect on your hormones. So your body, when you're in that fight or flight or stress mode, when you're running from the lion or the tiger in our kind of evolutionary biology scenario, then you need to be maximizing those things and cutting back on all the stuff you don't need. And that's really important because nowadays, we don't have lions chasing us generally, right? Most people don't, but we have the, the equivalent of that and that's papers that are due, bosses that are yelling at you, traffic that's bad, uh, deadlines that you're committed to, um, things that we even think about that we don't really need to be worried about, but what people think about us, who's on Instagram, what does this post look like? There can be a lot of different um, feelings that kind of are similar to that lion chasing us. Yeah, and even like you see like the kids today, mm -hmm. like the pressure in the school and the test and the getting into colleges. Yes. And I mean, the, yeah. the comparison and all of these things, like, so these things are starting to happen younger and younger. So, so many of the conditions we talk about are just, you know, like, they're, they're starting at a younger age. Yes. You know, we didn't have as much stress, I think, when we were younger that we do now. And our grandparents didn't have quite the same type of stress. So, yeah, because it all different kinds of stress. Uh, we certainly, I didn't have any, um, you know, we didn't have computers. We didn't have phones yes. we didn't have Facebook it was just like we saw kids outside and maybe yeah. they would make fun of and you and that would be a stress. If you got to the phone you got to the phone if right. not you didn't <laughs> you know but, it wasn't like right but you might have like uh, a few local people making fun of you or having difficulty in your school but you didn't have 
like whole communities able to kind of bully you and that cyberbullying or make you feel like you're inadequate in some way. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And you know happen. that when the tiger ran from, you know, when you're running from that tiger, once the tiger, you get away from it, you go back to safety. And we don't tend as society, like we never get that little point of safety and that full relief. It's kind of a constant. They say that it's 50 times a day that we're pulling our entire, our uh, internal fire alarm. Over 50 times And that's times a really a great way to think about it. It's like a fire alarm. You're pulling it, the bells are going off, and you're having to respond. And most of the time, it's not really because there's a car about to hit you. Most of the time, it's because of something that we perceive the boss is gonna be angry, uh, we're upset with our kids because of something. Yeah. Somebody said it's our something. Own it's our, it's a, a lot of our own perception. Perception. Yeah. And and at the end of the day, you're kind of crying wolf to your body, right? So you're telling your body that it needs to react, needs to react, needs to react, and it's gonna at some point the it's gonna be blurred mm -hmm. what it needs to react to. Because when you're in sympathetic, which is fight or flight, your body can't physically restore itself. It can't do that at the same time simultaneously. If you're spending most of your day it's in that sympathetic mode. Yeah. You're never in a place of rest and digest. You're never in a place that you can do these things that are critical for your body to function, right? So if you're constantly over here and you have poor sleep and you're not getting any of that relaxation restore time, you're, you're really setting yourself up for a lot of health issues, not just adrenal fatigue. <laughs> right, right. And so kind of going back to those adrenals, so when you're in that moment of uh, stress, the adrenals go in there, they give you the adrenaline. Over time, if you are still stressed, they're gonna throw out some cortisol, but that's meant to shut off. That's not meant to be your uh, daily functioning from nine uh, in the morning till nine or 10 o'clock at night or sometimes later. So you're meant to kind of flow through that, through you know needing a little spurt, getting something done, relaxing, eating, uh, usually with meals, and then getting a little something done, and then relaxing. So we're, we're supposed to have kind of a natural ebb and flow to our day. Yeah, it's something like 58% should occur in the morning of your cortisol. It looks like a bell curve, yeah. right? It's yeah, kind of like tapers. I, right, even more than 58%. Yeah. Your highest amount of cortisol should be released first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. And yeah. that's there to wake you up, to get you going. And that's normal, that's healthy, yeah. right? That cortisol response is healthy, we need it. But uh, if you then rise and your cortisol is the highest in the day, and then it doesn't drop off. If you're staying kind of high levels of cortisol, that's not healthy. It should drop by half by lunchtime, and then by another half by dinner time, and by another half by bedtime, so that you've got this kind of a nice curve. Okay. Yeah, and then the antithesis of that is gonna be your melatonin. Okay, so. I've got a little picture for you, okay? <laughs> so uh, that's, the, the line is kind of a rough average. In the white is all normal. And in the, the uh, green, the olive green, above or below is abnormal. Yeah, so when you're low here at night, that's what you wanna be. Because yeah. ideally your melatonin is up here. That's when you're asleep, right? In the morning, you don't want your melatonin high. Right. You want your melatonin low. And so they, that flip, they, they, they tend to of, flip, yeah. right? So if your melatonin is high, your cortisol tends to be low, which is one of the reasons that people who have high cortisol who are in that fight or flight can't sleep because they're not getting adequate amounts of melatonin. Yeah. So, yeah. so they everything's connected, right? So every everything is all interconnected. The body is very redundant and doesn't waste anything. So there's a lot of messaging that goes on when one thing goes high, this happens. When it goes low, this other thing happens. So we, we want to give it good signals, right? So those uh, those adrenals are then meant to do their work and then they're meant to relax. And like you were saying, when we get stressed, we don't go back to our previous way of being. In fact, a, an author whose work I really love, um, Robert Saplowski, uh, wrote a book called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And I love his book. It's uh, a great read for anybody. It is a little technical. He's a uh, uh, neurobiologist, um, primatologist, I believe at Stanford, somewhere in the West Coast. And he's written a lot. But this one particular book just talks about the fact that a zebra, unlike us, a zebra is at the watering hole. He sees the lion. He suddenly gets into that fight or flight and off he takes off, running away, okay? He escapes the lion. Hopefully one of his friends doesn't get caught. But he's not worried about that friend. He's taking care of himself. And the minute the lion's nowhere there, back down to the watering hole, he's just chilling again. He's yeah. not thinking about 
Where is that lion? Who's, who did they get? How did I look when I was running? Did I look funny? You know, who else is over there? What are we gonna do next? You know, <laughs> we go down this whole little rabbit hole, yeah. right? And then we create much of our own. I, I, I had a similar thing with um, when you're walking the dog and they pass another dog and they're all Bleh. And then 10 feet later, like they're it's over fine. it. Yeah, they're done. <laughs> yeah. We're like, oh my gosh, that dog looked at us funny. Right. What's wrong? Did they, did my look funny? We, right. we stir and we he stress might have bit me. about what, like what that other dog. What if bit me? You know, what, what could have what, what I done? Yeah. Did I get my tetanus shot? You know, <laughs> you have all of these, this whole litany of thoughts that you have yeah. that other animals, other mammals don't have. So it's beneficial to us to do that. So we can plan, we can execute things, but it's got it backfires when we yeah. go too much down that rabbit hole so as much as you can try to be like that <laughs> the dog or your zebra yes um, so now if that's the normal state of being then we can obviously have abnormal states of being with your adrenals where you uh, go high or go too low and so if they're too low then you're not able to respond to stress you can't get out of bed you don't answer the phone you're not interested in eating you have no joy in life and that can be actually a lot like depression, yeah. right? So they can, they can really kind of mimic a lot of the symptoms. And that's really a big problem for both over uh, high cortisol and low cortisol because they can mimic so many other things. Yeah. So yeah. it becomes a challenge to diagnose. And then we got to talk about um, when you talk to your primary care doctor about that <laughs> and you say, oh, I think I've got adrenal fatigue and they go, that isn't a thing. Okay, well, you've, been reading, you've been reading too much Dr. Google. And so they're right in a way because it isn't really a disease per se. Okay, so. Cushing's is where you have a high cortisol, really high cortisol across the board. That's a disease, um, but that's a different thing than what we're talking about right now. So what they really, uh, what we need to understand is that adrenal fatigue is really more about the brain than the adrenals. The adrenals can make it uh, <coughs> if we just start to shift how we're thinking. It's yeah. really a, an issue of kind of shifting and doing things that are fun and really kind of thinking about ourselves like a battery mm -hmm. and trying not to deplete ourselves. Yeah, when you mentioned depletion, it, when you're talking about the brain's kind of the puppeteer and it's telling everybody where things need to go and it's telling like your master hormone like what needs to be produced right so you've got your cortisol you've got your sex hormones your progesterone your estrogen your testosterone your DHEA and, and it's it's kind of scooting things where it needs to go as appropriate to what your body's needing right, right. when your your brain is directing everything to the production of cortisol all of the time Essentially, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul, yep. right? Yep. It, it, it can't continually produce cortisol and keep up with the production of all of your regular hormones. So often, and, and correct me, I, you see a lot more than I do test-wise, but so it's not unusual to see a change in your sex hormones when mm, you see that dramatic all. change in your cortisol. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will wonder what's going on with their body and they're tired or they're, they their no moods libido. or they're, yeah. yeah, like all these other symptoms that come along with having sometimes zero there's different stages of this fatigue that we're talking about the adrenal fatigue so some stages you might actually feel quite manic and mm -hmm. really kind of wired and some people are like that's how that fuels me that's how I get through right. my day right. these corporate people I see you know and and yes. they're like but that's what gives me my fire and that's cool but it won't last <laughs> right it's not it, it will wear right it's not sustainable and every time that you're getting up to that place and not coming back to homeostasis where your body gets back balanced it, your body eventually is just gonna not gonna give you any of it, right? So if you get over that hill and then you sink, then that's really the hardest time to really try to restore yourself back to that normal mm -hmm. rhythm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, all all that she says. And s sometimes what you'll find is that these really hyper-functioning executives and doctors and lawyers and stuff that are like pushing it every day, you know, 14, 16 hour work days, they uh, are the ones that just all of a sudden seems crash. all of a sudden but it's not really they all of a sudden seem to crash yeah and then they're they're done and they have this chronic fatigue where they can't get out of bed and they've got no energy and um, then is it mood is it uh, energy is it adrenals there it can be a lot of different things yeah but and it's they often start with the health issues and the belly fat and the, right yeah yeah and so we see this a lot in very type A people um, yeah super super common the other thing I tell people that have that kind of 
like type A and like go, 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 go. And that's just how they roll, right? Is you, you as a personality have a higher stress tolerance level. Mm -hmm. So somebody that maybe doesn't have that same intensity, if they walked into your day and the life, they would be like, I mean, fall apart. Right. right. Mm -hmm. You're like, I got this. This is mm -hmm. nothing. Right. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's a problem too. You have to be really in tune with that because that can mean that you're not connected to what's happening in your body when you're going into this intensity in your day. So it doesn't mean your body doesn't have physiological responses and right. it doesn't mean your cortisol is not going up just because you can hack it. Right. It means that you're just tolerating it at a higher level to where it's going to ultimately wear down at some point. Exactly. And we all have different limits. So for example, when I was an ER doc working night shifts, weekends, I had three kids under three. I mean, I was like working hard, right? Trying to balance everything, trying to be all things to all people, and it, it can't last. So getting I had no sleep. <laughs> getting no sleep. I was getting no sleep, right? And uh, chronic headaches. I just felt lousy, but I was like pushing through because I just need to do this a little bit longer, and then, you know, the kids will grow up and this, that, and the other things. So it, it, it doesn't last, right? It's not sustainable. Eventually, yeah. I just said, I can't keep this up. I need to stop. I need to really take care of my health. So you need to start to really tune in and not be superwoman, yes. right? So that's, yes. that's a big piece of what the message we want to get out to people tonight is self-care. If you want to prevent this from happening and if you want to treat yeah. it, self-care is super important. Yeah, so when your hormones start flattening out, like we were talking about, one of them's progesterone, right? Your progesterone's like your happy hormone. So that's the one that you kind of need that extra cushion to offset some of the effects of estrogens. And progesterone is one of the things you can work on, mm -hmm. right? By doing these self-nurturing things, by yeah. really like tapping into like what your body needs and honoring some of the things that you haven't really paid attention to, right? Um, going out of your way, especially these type A personalities, you might have to go out of your, your way. way, not just get a mani-pedi because you're in a rush and you're getting your nails done, but like sitting and getting a massage and Schedule meditation and like yourself. really, Actually really book an appointment. Yeah, like really intentional. You have to be intentional about it. Um, mm -hmm. It it will. I've seen it. I've been there. It it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that progresses over time. So you might be like, oh, everything's fine, but like three years ago, someone in your life passed and you didn't give it really the grief that it was ne it was necessary for you to process. And that stuff will catch up to you and it kind of wears you down because that's all pent up energy and we can get into a whole energy thing on it too, but it, it does really, really affect every aspect of your yeah, body. Every aspect. So when your cortisol rhythm is wackadoo, what do we do? Okay, well, first to know it is, you really need to measure it. But if you don't have the opportunity to measure it, you don't have a functional medicine doctor that's gonna do that, if you get some of the, the books, and we'll put a little list of books out, but um, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, Adrenal Fatigue, 21st Century Disease by Dr. Wilson, uh, and a few others. I like that, um, Alan Christensen's um, Adrenal Reset. He talks adrenal Reset, reset. yeah, he's got a very nice Adrenal Reset. So that can give you some ideas, but your symptoms can be all across the board. The most common ones are gonna be that fatigue, Headaches. And or the manic part, because if you're kind of in the early yes. stages, yeah, can, you can recognize manic. that some of that really intense morning stuff yeah. is the pre, it's kind of the, the precursor. Itself. If you can't turn yourself down or you know kind of relax, that's a big sign. Yeah. If you can't sleep at night because your mind's going, you got that monkey mind, you just keep on thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, those are all some signs. And then you lose your libido, your muscles. You can't build muscle even though you're working out. You start to get belly fat. Um, there's just, you know, it yeah. kind of is pervasive across your whole physiology uh, because it's so important. So if you're noticing those kinds of things and you're thinking, yeah, maybe I've got this. So then the most important thing you can do, the number one thing, sleep, right? Do what you need to do to sleep, but without um, medications that are going to switch your whole uh, sleep architecture. So things like Ambien switch your sleep architecture, the benzodiazepines like uh, Valium and Xanax and uh, those swips change well, your sleep architecture. Well, those will deplete your melatonin a lot. And they deplete your melatonin as well. So you want to look for melatonin, you want to uh, look for, for valerian root, you can use some 5-hydroxytryptophan, but one of the nicest things, and we've talked about this many times, is to take an hour before bedtime and create a little nighttime routine. 
Yeah, the sleep sanctuary. Yeah, she's got it on the sleep sanctuary. So that's really, really key. Um, and if you want to learn more about that, we've got some other uh, Facebook can, lives. I can that share my to. sleep tip. Yep. Cheat sheet. Like we ch we shared a cheat sheet last week um, on all of the, or two weeks ago on the things that we like. I have a sleep cheat sheet. And if you just take one or two of these things each week and try to implement them, some of them are really easy, like changing like your air by a couple degrees. Um, you know, some of them are a little more routine and pattern building that you'd have to establish over time. But some of them are, are just simple to improve your sleep based on the atmosphere in the room itself. Yes. So we can share that. Yeah. So getting uh, into a nice sleep pattern is the most important thing. So trying to go to bed before midnight and allowing yourself to sleep in after nine in the morning. And if you can go to bed consistently, it's really important for um, anybody with potential adrenal fatigue, circadian dysfunction is another fancy term for it, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis dysfunction is another name for it. Um, Say that five times fast. Yeah, right, five times fast. So if you ha think you might have that, just sleep. Sleep is one of the most important things to help to reset. So, so it, it might not be ideal that you sleep past nine in the morning, right? So that that's fine. And you that's can't you, for work. The, the what you, you would do, yeah, like what you what you really want to do still is kind of get into a rhythm that your body starts to recognize the pattern of going to sleep and waking up. The waking time, it's really important to get exposure to that sunlight in the morning. So between the hours of 6.30 and 8.30, if you're getting up, making sure that you're walking outside, even if you're just going out to check the mailbox or you know, have your coffee on the porch or whatnot. Actually, let's talk about coffee, your decaf on the porch. It, getting outside and getting some exposure to that sunlight and kind of telling your body, okay, this is the time that everything should be, you know, yeah. getting lit up and, and started. And that's really important because they're really, um, the research is really starting to point to the importance of these circadian rhythms. Circadian just means with the light. So we know that when we take a plane and we go across uh, time zones that we feel really terrible. That's because we've changed our circadian rhythm. So eating according to the day and the night is really important. Sleeping when it's dark and waking up when it's light, really important. Um, all of these things can really affect our mood, our libido. It's like your body clock. Your body clock, it's totally, uh, there is an internal rhythm uh, connected to the sun because of course we didn't always have light bulbs. Yes. Yeah. And we didn't have like lit up street signs. So like yeah. when they went to sleep at night, they slept by the stars, right? So it's super dark out. If you ever go anywhere, like a lake area, mm -hmm. it doesn't have all the street lights. It's right. dark, right? You Marnie know? knows about that. <laughs> hey, Marnie. Um, hey, Marnie. Um, so, so yeah, so that's super important. And then talking about, uh, what about those who work at nights? Yes. Very much higher risk. Very, Very much higher point. risk, yeah. People that work overnight, because their circadian rhythm, and this is just a little side note, but they've studied this, their circadian rhythm gets messed up significantly. They have higher risk for diabetes, higher risk for almost all types of cancer, and definitely higher risk for high blood pressure. So. Yeah, there, there's not much to say for those people other than, I mean, if you're forced in that thing, ideally you try to get out of it. <laughs> Do it for a while um, you can, and then try to sleep as much as in there. Yeah, get as yeah. much of the sleep, but that opposing pattern is not. Switching back and forth yeah. is super hard. Yeah, it's very difficult. So uh, yeah. we need those people that work nights. I did it when I was in the ER. I mean, we need all our EMTs and doctors and uh, stewardesses and, uh, you know, uh, pilots and there's a whole bunch of people that have to end up working at night but if you can cycle in and out of it over like months like maybe do it for a week and then do three weeks of normal and then wait one week of night and then three weeks of normal would it benefit anyone like that to like have protective eyewear and stuff in their different environments I don't know that anybody studied that yeah and even what I'm saying that one week three weeks nobody's really studied that it just yeah I know from when I did it that I did feel better when I uh, didn't yeah when I didn't do it like for a month straight nights yeah yeah so um, it needs to be studied so mm -hmm. we'll get some researchers out there to figure that out so what I was going to say though what I was segueing into was coffee yes so if you are one of those people that take your cup of coffee in the morning you cannot get anything done until you've had your coffee and you may need two or three cups in the morning that's a pretty good sign that you may have this circadian dysfunction because you shouldn't have to whip your body into action. Yeah. You should be getting plenty of sleep, you should wake up healthy energized. food, yeah. lots of water, and giving your body what it needs. 
I invite you to think about the coffee that you're drinking in the morning that you have to have to wake up. It's kind of like in the old days when they would whip the horses, right? Get going, okay? They weren't gonna give them rest. They weren't gonna feed them. They weren't gonna give them any water. They just had to get back to work and they would beat whip them. them. They would beat them. That's the equivalent of what you're doing to your body if you're drinking coffee for that reason. Now, if you're drinking it because it tastes nice and you enjoy a cup here and there, but you don't depend it, on yeah. it, you don't need it, that's a completely different thing. Yeah, and if you are having that one and, and it's not to be fully relied on, make sure that you're hydrated before you're having that. So drink that yeah. eight to 12 ounce glass of water before when you wake up and you're having that coffee. But the other thing I, I've seen a little bit about is like the lot, with the intermittent fasting becoming so popular, sometimes people with adrenal stuff may not respond as well to intermittent fasting because those periods of time, their body's much more sensitive to stress. They're very sensitive to high intensity exercise as well. Yeah. So some people will come in with these crazy rhythms and they're out there hitting the pavement and they're nailing it because that's their stress relief. Um, but they, they don't realize yeah. that the exercise itself can become defeating yeah. and you might need to back off of it for a period of time or spread it out to where you're not doing that intensity every day. You wanna do more restorative type exercises, whether it's yoga or Pilates and, and or walking. And my intense junkies nothing. just hate it when I tell them that, but it's, yeah. it, it's burning all that cortisol. It's kind of giving you, it's making you feel that manic, really good the uh, chemicals feeling. The chemicals that are giving to your yeah, brain, right? right? The, the opiates, the endocannabinoids, all those things. But there's a limit to when it's uh, above that, it's not healthy. Below that, it can be healthy. And you've got to figure out what your balance is. So if you cannot tolerate anything that's relaxing and quieting to your system, you probably are pushing it too hard. Yeah, if you feel like you have to run from yourself mm -hmm. or run from something to, to get a grip on what's happening in your life, that's usually a sign too that like exercise is amazing and it does have a wonderful, good, yeah. amazing impact. But I was telling Dr. G before cut before here that when I had adrenal fatigue and I was pretty flatlined. I mean, I was like dead. Mm -hmm. I had no cortisol in the morning, nothing, but I ran on like nothing. And I went and I did my 5 a.m. workouts and I would test when I started having high blood sugar issues because my body started to react in all different kinds of crazy ways. I was testing my blood sugar after my workouts and I was getting as high as if I had just eaten a bowl of pasta. Yeah. So I was really, I had to actually really back off because it was defeating. It was mm -hmm. actually putting my body into fat storage and that's mm -hmm. where you get the belly fat and that's where is when you're, you know, you've got the high cortisol, it's gonna just tell your body to right. shut everything off. Keep the glucose in the blood. Right, keep it there. And so that's a good segue into the next point. We've only got a few minutes left. So the other thing that's really key in terms of helping to prevent and even treat uh, this circadian dysfunction is a good healthy diet. Lot, very plant dense, very nutrient dense, lots of nuts and seeds and variety of different vegetables and fruits. Uh, meats are fine, animal proteins are fine, uh, some carbs are fine, just not too many. And But finding a balance and eating clean, uh, organic, non-chemicalized. Managing your sugar, uh, for sure. Food, yeah, and managing your sugar. But trying to min minimize the amount of chemicals on your food, the pesticides, yes. herbicides. But you wanna also focus on your minerals. So your your sodium intake, a lot of people do yeah. have mineral imbalances yes. that have adrenal stuff. So yeah. it's the three S's, your sex hormones are out of whack, <laughs> your yeah. sugar and your salt is usually affected. So those things those are, are good things, things to, to remember, pay attention, the three, the three S's, yeah. and. Um, making sure that you're taking some of those nutrients, but then also the, like I said, the minerals, that's like a, that was a big one for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is actually for a lot of people. And uh, sometimes you'll notice that you're just going to the bathroom constantly. You can't seem to keep any yeah. any water in. You probably need more minerals. So uh, being a little bit more liberal with your salt, of course, make sure you don't have high blood pressure, but usually those people have low. Yeah, typically. Um, and then the potassium and magnesium containing foods are really important. And something like uh, coconut water, so that can be fabulous because there's a lot of good yes. minerals and yeah. um, electrolytes. So a uh, good healthy diet, plenty of sleep, restorative activities such as meditation, uh, mindfulness. Meditation's a big one for Yeah, this. it's a big one. So Learn to do it because it's, it, it's, it's really the biggest needle mover in terms of getting everything to calm down in yes, your body. Yes, yes. Uh, and there's many different ways to do it. We've talked about that also. Yeah. There's other... Uh, Facebook lives, but really trying to explore some ways to help your body relax, right? It's, it's okay to not be productive. 
I've got so many people that are going, but I got, I got things to do. I got to be productive. I don't feel good if I just you know sit down and my list is still there. I'm a list of things to do. But we need to kind of find that It'll balance. It'll be there tomorrow. It'll be there tomorrow, <laughs> absolutely. And if you get so whacked out on this getting things done, then you, you're going to crash and nothing's going to get done. Yeah. So you really have to be proactive, kind of see that it's coming, that it might be an issue for you, and then start to turn back the needle and give yourself a little self-care. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Because we threw a lot of good dirt at you. <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of info. Um, yes, yeah, so Marianne had touched space. Let me just see if I can see down here any other questions we might have missed because we do. Lillian was talking, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the parents are, are well. extremely concerned. Definitely seeing a lot more of that chaos with the kids. Um, Sally popped in. We got Marianne. We, we got, got Rosie, Rosie and Marty. Hey, Rosie. And, and Linda. Linda. Hey there. So you guys, thank you so much for coming out and, um, Feel free, please share if you guys think that's your finger over there. I know. I, I'm so not tech savvy. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, so, yes, yeah, so if you have any questions, obviously just go ahead and feel free to share it. Please um, feel free to share this through YouTube or through Facebook with any friends or family that you think might benefit from this because we'd like the word to get out about the things that you can do for your own health and uh, send us ideas of things that you'd like us to talk about in the future. And we're considering having some guests on and interviewing some people. So if you have anybody that's in our local area that we, uh, you think you would like to hear us interview or talk about a yeah, certain topic. Yeah, maybe some topics, you know, yeah. like if it's, if it's more fitness you want to hear, if there's a little more specialized type areas or special conditions. Yeah, just throw out ideas, whatever you're interested in, we'll try to accommodate. All right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thanks thank, for coming out. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.